Welcome to my college football awards show. I know I'm dressed super fancy. You're probably dressed super fancy as well. And these aren't the Heisman winner or the Dick Buckus award winner. This is more my created awards for this 2021 to 20 or no actually it was 2020 to 2021 sorry i'm already looking ahead to the next season i'm about to start doing my preseason looks and once february signing day is completely done and this recruiting cycle is completely finished and transfers have finally settled on where they're going i will start making my 2021 to 2020 to full season recap and summary and start to look ahead to the next season but with that being said i do want to do an award show kind of what were the most disappointing teams what were the best quarterback best running back who was the bozo of the year that kind of thing some are going to have honorable mentions some aren't because i feel like they're clear-cut unanimous winners if they don't have an honorable mention it's probably because they're unanimous in my eyes so to start off these these awards are all very random. I've saved the most valuable player for last if you are looking for that award. But for the most disappointing team of 2021, we have four candidates here. We have Clemson, who is highly touted coming into the year, believing that they were gonna continue their dominance. We have Iowa State, who we thought was gonna be much better with Brees Hall and Brock Purdy. We also have Ohio State, who we expected to potentially be in the playoffs. And we have the Oklahoma Sooners. And with that being said, I believe the Oklahoma Sooners were the most disappointing team overall this year. Barring that their expectations were set so high in the preseason rankings and they were expected to be in the national championship guaranteed, they did not play to standards, even though the record isn't that terrible. You, you look at the games that they were playing there, they did not play good. Yes, they beat Texas, but at the end of the day, Texas was five and seven, so that's not an impressive win to me. A year that you lose to Oklahoma State, you don't even make the Big 12 championship after being ranked, I think, number one in the preseason rankings. I know preseason rankings don't really matter, but they're also an expectation of what is set moving forward into the season, and they just completely fell off, and they went and faced a very depleted Oregon team and dominated in their bowl game. Congratulations to Oklahoma. You were the most disappointing team, and I think they had the potential to be the most surprising team moving into next year. The best quarterback of the 2021 season was easily Bryce Young. Bryce Young was poised in every game, unless it was the national championship or on Kyle Field. He was fantastic. He won the Heisman for a reason. He deserved to win the Heisman. He was the best quarterback easily. I will say I had a couple of honorable mentions, but I don't think they were actually in contention to be the best quarterback of college football. But I'll say it was CJ Stroud, Matt Corral, Kenny Pickett, and Bailey Zapp. Bailey Zapp would most likely win my out of power five best player potentially with uh, him being on Western Kentucky and throwing up Joe Burrow-like stats, but he did not have Joe Burrow-like wins. Best game of the 2021 season. We have a lot of honorable mentions here. We have a lot of candidates here. We have Alabama versus Auburn in their four overtime battle. We have Michigan and Ohio State in one of the best games of the year with Michigan pulling off the upset. The hype around this game was massive. We have Oklahoma versus Texas where we watched Caleb Williams burst onto the scene. We have A&M versus Alabama. Alabama losing to an unranked team for the first time since I think 2007 or 09. And then we have the Rose Bowl, Ohio State versus the Utah Utes. And the winner of this one, I gotta say, it was the Rose Bowl, man. Part of me wanted to say it was A&M versus Alabama, being that I was at that game and I got to experience it for myself. But being unbiased, I gotta say it was the Rose Bowl. There's nothing you can beat about that game. You had, a, yeah, I think, a third stringer coming in and battling against Ohio State. C.J. Stroud put on a show. Jackson Smith, incredible game. Probably one of the greatest all-time performances. That game is just so hard to beat, and it happened at the end of the year. It was the, probably the best bowl game right there with the national championship. I wanted to put the national championship in there, but I just felt these games just had a different level to them. The wildest story of the year. This is one of my created ones. Just one of those stories that just baffled me. It was Texas special teams coach Jeff Banks having his pet monkey attack a child on Halloween. I'm not going to go into the details of the story, barring that I probably would get demonetized for the, the, the language that was used in that story. But if you want to Google it, watch it, read about it. It's one of the most insane stories about Jeff Banks and how he's just a terrible human being. And his wife is not a great 
person and it's just a it's an insane story and when i read it it was just fitting for texas's season and i could not believe it when i read the headline if it, it seemed like a tmz fake headline honestly and it, it just baffled me that it was a real thing best defense in college football I, I i will mention the honorable mentions but this one's also a unanimous one in my opinion it was georgia georgia it was fantastic other than the sec championship they nicobe dean they have so many first rounders they they played fantastic it was just perfection on a defensive side of the ball nicobe dean is probably one of my favorite linebacker prospects i've ever seen he's going to be a star in the nfl they just had every level jordan davis you had so much talent on that team and they stepped up to the plate and played fantastic all year except for one blip in the sec championship and that is it with honorable mentions being cincinnati with ahmad gardner and Majai sanders you have iowa who played fantastic they were the number two team in the nation for a reason because of that defense um i'll throw Notre dame in there with kyle hamilton I'll throw Baylor in there. Baylor was so good on defense with Jalen Petrie and many others. And then you have Texas A&M, who A&M did have a very much a down year, and they're depleted on offense. But their defense had DeMarvin Leal, um, Leon O'Neal Jr. You had um, so many Aaron Hansford. You have so many guys on that defense that played really good, and they had, I think, only averaged like about whoa i don't want to say the wrong one but all time probably their second lowest defense points allowed per game uh for that for that program it's probably one of the greatest defenses they've ever had and they just couldn't keep up offensively that's why they had a down year but defensively they played fantastic uh, unless it was mississippi state then mississippi state dotted them up i mean every team on this list got defensively had a game where they just slipped up tremendously but with that being said georgia i don't think it's close with any of the teams i listed i think georgia was easily the best defense in college football throw in michigan there i i, I forgot to mention uh michigan i didn't write it in my script i, I it just came to my head michigan easily one of the best defenses in hutchinson and all their all their stars on the defensive line and they're really good secondary with uh daxton hill one of the best defenses. I don't, I, I don't want to discredit Michigan there. Most hype disappointing game of 2021. I don't, I couldn't think of any honorable mentions here. Be, and with the, the context of this award is a, a game that had game day. Everyone was very excited for this game and it just flopped. I could easily say any like week one Alabama games get very much hyped. Like say Alabama plays Virginia Tech or something like that. They do tend to like just flop and become blowouts, but it's easy to kind of go with week one. I could go with Miami versus Alabama here. Now that I think about it, part of my yawn because these games are so boring. I gotta say it was Ohio State versus Michigan State because unless you're a Ohio State fan, no one enjoyed that game. I mean, it was just a, a, a blowout from the first quarter to the fourth quarter. You had game day there. Everyone thought this was going to be a Kenneth Walker versus CJ Stroud battle. And it just ended up being under domination by Ohio State and michigan state just did not show up their secondary is terrible and just got absolutely dimed up and down the field and it was easily the most hyped up game that just fell extremely flat and that is i don't think it was close with anybody else now one of my favorite positions in college football because it's just so talented and can really change a team uh unlike the nfl where Running backs are very much popular and they're very much used, but they sometimes you get like Kenneth Walkers who are like the Derrick Henry equivalent for a team, but in the NFL you only get one of those and college football you get a ton of them and they're breakout stars and sometimes they just pull off runs that I just baffle me and I love the running back position in college football. I mean, I when Wisconsin was pumping out first round picks, I just loved watching Wisconsin football because man, they would have 250 yard rushers and it's just incredible i, I can I, I can rave on about running backs in college football all i want but the best one in college football let's go through some options here uh i don't think this one was unanimous I, it could be it very much could be but i just want to kind of add a little bit of suspense here probably the best freshman running back is Trav travion henderson right there with braylon allen uh abram smith carry that Baylor offense. Isaiah Spiller still had a really good year. Bijan Robinson was looking like a Heisman candidate before Texas fell off a cliff. And you have Kenneth Walker Jr., who I think is pretty obvious is the winner of this award. Kenneth Walker, 
was Michigan State football. He was the best transfer of the year if you want to add an award. He was fantastic, and the fact that he didn't get more love in the Heisman voting is ridiculous to me. He was just incredible this year, and he was one of the most fun players to watch. And Kenneth Walker, my rose is out to you, man. You you killed it this year. Just fantastic football, and all, all these guys fantastic abram smith if you don't know who he is go watch him play he is one of my he was a converted linebacker that plays running back for baylor and baylor won the big 12 and he was a big part of that freshman of the year freshmen come in every year and there's just a handful of them that just immediately huge impact players guys that change the game guys that can actually elevate an offense to higher levels than anybody expects and some of the options we got here today, we got Caleb Williams, Brock Bowers, Travion Henderson, Xavier Worthy. I want to put CJ Stroud in here. I kind of didn't want to put redshirt freshmen. I, I wanted true freshmen in here. And if one of these guys are true, uh, not true freshmen, then I apologize. But I think Brock Bowers, all, all these guys I mentioned should be full true freshmen, I believe. But with that being said, I think the winner is Caleb Williams. Uh, Caleb Williams came in. Uh, midway through the year took out the preseason Heisman winner of Spencer Rattler and he absolutely dominated under Lincoln Riley and he's in the transfer portal my freshman of the year is in the transfer portal and he could go anywhere he wants he's not going to Oklahoma I'll tell you that and he's probably going to go join USC and Lincoln Riley and it's going to be absolutely insanity because Caleb Williams is one of my favorite players of college football. I think he's my Heisman favorite coming into next year. Right there with uh, Quinn Ewers and a couple other guys. And CJ Stroud as well. But I truly do think Caleb Williams came in and changed that Oklahoma team. With that one run against Texas. Absolutely just fantastic football through and through. He had a couple not great games. But as a freshman, he absolutely changed the game. Xavier Worthy, I want to show some love to. One of the best wide receivers. He didn't get to a thousand yards this year, but he had 12 touchdowns and he was averaging like 17 yards per catch. You have Travion Henderson, who's one of the most electric backs in college football, and he's poised to break out next year. And then Brock Bowers. I watched that SEC SEC championship and I have not seen a tight end dominate as much as Brock Bowers has for Georgia. He has changed their offense and has allowed for a guy to go over the middle while a lot of the receivers are outside. He can dominate the inside of the field and he has been able to dominate zones like i've never seen and he's a great blocking tight end as well especially when you had a six foot seven freak of nature sitting behind him and he still dominated brock bowers fantastic he's gonna be a first round pick watch that coach of the year i have five options here nick saban with one of his least talented teams that he's ever had got him to a national national title with uh, a loss to texas a m you have Dave Noranda, won the Big 12. Brian Kelly, right before he left. I mean, Notre Dame almost sneaked into the playoffs. And he did a fantastic job, what seemed to be a rebuilding year for Notre Dame. We have Jim Harbaugh getting his team to the playoffs, turning things around after a terrible 2020 COVID-riddled year. And then we have Kirby Smart winning his first national title. I There's so many options here, but I'm going to take the, the unorthodox take and say Dave Noranda and Nick Saban probably is second there with Jim Harbaugh being third because Jim Harbaugh I think had a lot more help with his assistants and it wasn't really him now it was him but I feel like his change of assistants really really helped him Nick Saban had to deal with uh, Bill O'Brien and many others I think that was his best coaching work but Dave Aranda with what he was given the injuries to the quarterback being able to win the Big 12 and beat Oklahoma beat Oklahoma State I, I was so impressed by Dave Aranda and the fact that he stayed at Baylor was super impressive to me. I, I got to give the coach of the year award to him. Shout out to Dave Aranda. He is one of my favorite coaches of college football and he did a fantastic job this year. A couple of smaller awards that don't have any honorable mentions. Greatest single performance this year. Jackson Smith and Jigba. Rose Bowl. I, I cannot mention enough how great that game was. That is probably the greatest performance of probably two years. I, I've never seen a wide receiver dominate as much as he did that day. Uh, we got to get through some of these awards faster. Greatest one game wonder, Zach Calzada against Alabama. I mean, Zach Calzada, uh, shout out to him coming into a situation, being thrown into the fire, doing the best as he can with uh, the starter. The guy that Jimbo Fisher has selected breaks his leg. He goes into the fire as a 
as a freshman and beats Alabama at home. One of the best games of the year for him and shout out to him for it. I guess an honorable mention you could say, I actually don't know. I think that is the greatest one game wonder for him. I hope he goes and does well in Auburn as long as he doesn't play well against AM. and Senior of the year, Kenny Pickett. Guys show Kenny Pickett some love. He's one of my favorite quarterbacks coming into this draft and he dominated this year there's no way around it he is the senior of the year in my opinion and he should go in the first round in this draft most excited for next year the team that was just kind of coasting through this year and most excited for the year after texas a&m uh they got a lot of momentum in the recruiting class throughout the 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 season and was just kind of getting more and more excited for the year after not really kind of cruise controlling this year a little bit after the alabama win honorable mentions we got Tennessee, Florida, LSU, USC, Miami, all these teams have either gotten coaching changes or we're just kind of ready to move on to the next step and that next step being next year. I could also throw Oregon now with Dan Lanning, really good hire by the way. We got three awards left before this video gets way too long. Best hire of the year, Lincoln Riley, USC, easy. I mean, you get a guy that took Oklahoma to the playoffs multiple times in a and you move them to an easier conference where with a much better recruiting area that has been practically untouched you can go dominate in usc and he's already bringing so many people over from oklahoma all throughout usc is going to be a force to be reckoned with clown of the year we got three options here we got the special teams coach for texas you gotta go read that story brian kelly for the way that he left Notre dame just terrible guy and we have dan mullen clown bozo of the year and he's the winner of it too to to dismantle florida the way that he did to say that he doesn't care about recruiting during the season shout out to billy napier for turning things around in florida what seems to be turning around florida very quickly dan mullen florida fans will agree he's bozo of the year brian kelly very close um i give bozo of the year to dan mullen easily and with the most valuable player this year let's go through the candidates this this is who i see to be the best player in college football not saying like the lebron james award because the most valuable player i'd probably give to kenneth walker who means the most to his team uh i could even say kenny pickett in there but when i say the best player of the year i'm saying for the mvp and let's go through some of our options we have jameson williams nicobe dean desmond ritter jordan davis bryce young will anderson ahmaud garner and with that being said Will Anderson's the best player in college football. We saw in the national title, he is the best player. He should have been in New York watching that Heisman, probably not winning, but he, I would also throw Aiden Hutchinson in there, by the way. Uh, just wanted to throw that in there. But Will Anderson, best player in college football. He's going to be the best player next year. And what I want to ask you um, in the comments is if you have the number one pick next year, who do you go with? Will Anderson or Bryce Young? Let me know in the comments. And Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to get out of here before this video gets way too long. If you have any personal awards, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.